Right, it's uh, just after 12, it's, it's Friday, and uh, I'm here with Wanderers Manager Mark White for our weekly catch-up. How are you doing, Mark? Fine, thanks. Good, good. Right, so um, first of all, I mean, obviously we'll talk about tomorrow's game against Barnet shortly, but we've had two games since you and I last catch-up, caught up rather. Uh, obviously, we went up to Hartlepool last Saturday and got a, uh, a solid 2-0 victory, um, and then we were down here on Tuesday night and uh, where we lost the, lost the game 1-0 to Kidderminster. Just get your thoughts on those two, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I would heart the Paul's fantastic performance, um, well organised, um, and uh, well prepped, really. And uh, I think, listen, any team that goes to heart the Paul and picks up a win this year uh, will, will, you know, be doing really well. Um, and that sort of continued that run of form away from home, whereby we've been putting a little bit more time and money and effort against the planning for those games. We've been a staying over on the Friday night and, and doing what a full-time team would do. And that's obviously bad, uh, paid dividend. And then on and Tuesday, to be fair, was almost the polar opposite. I think that was where you saw the, the lack of being full-time. Um, we got back from Hartlepool at, let's say, I think it's about 1.30 a.m., 2 a.m. Some players got back at 3 a.m. Um, and the next we saw the players was, on, uh, was 6.15 on Tuesday night. Felt like that game came around quite quickly. Um, we listen. We was we was planned for it. We prepped incorrectly. Uh, not really our doing. They just surprised us with what they'd done. Um, but primarily, the game came around a bit too quick, I think. And um, obviously, the, the 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 main issue at the moment is the plethora of injuries. It's horrific. I think the management team and the boys have done amazingly well to pick up results during this period um, and Tuesday was just a bit of a step too far we was missing more players than already missing uh, Mac had done his really bad hamstring uh, at Hartlepool after one minute so um, he, he's out for four weeks and yeah so Tuesday we struggled to get um, Callum Kennedy had a small strain and McShane obviously we know about so the bench had three defenders a goalie and Harry on there, uh, it just felt like a really tough ask on Tuesday. Um, but um, that is this league, the fixtures hit you thick and fast, but you certainly can see the benefits of being a full-time side, because we've really picked up our overall form uh, with that little bit of additional um, prep for the away days, with the Friday night stayovers. Um, we've definitely picked up our sort of structure as a team by doing that those couple of mornings, not evenings. Do you know what I mean? So you can see, you know, the goals against record, the goal difference, it's all improved. And with the huge amount of players missing, I have to say, like, I, if anyone says, yeah, fucking Dawkins, they're always missing players. We are, I totally agree with that. There's no hiding place and our physio team are more than aware of that. Uh, and we are looking at that all the time. But the fact remained, we are missing a lot of players and we are going into tomorrow's game honestly with a, a huge amount of players that are injured um, you know we're going in there with you know Tony Craig um, I actually forget the names you know Barry Fuller Tony Craig James McShane Arm McManus Matt Briggs um, out, well obviously yeah, yeah. Seb Bauman yeah. Seb Bauman's out for four weeks um Luke Moore, I think it's about nine in total. If I've not mentioned someone, that they'll be offended. They shouldn't be, they're the ones that are missing. Um, but yeah, it's about nine players that are injured, very difficult to cope. We are so thankful for the two week break. We have, you know, from league action, you know, as of tomorrow evening, it's, it's two weeks before the next game. And it's been a tough t time. And listen, we're not the only National League team that's struggling for. Um, Injuries at the moment. Obviously, I think everyone's felt the pain with all the added time, you know, that went on at the start of the season in particular. Saturday, Tuesday for three weeks back to back. Um, football's changing a little bit as well. You know, it's more dynamic now. It's less long ball. It's more dynamic. It's more demanding. So, but listen, I'm not so sure many teams have got as many as nine that are missing. Tomorrow, out of that nine, we'll probably have to have two of them on the bench named because otherwise we weren't, weren't going to name a bench and I don't think there'll be much copy that have to come on.
But that's where we are, mate. So, to be fair, we have been in that position for about a month, albeit the whole, the ones to Macca and Callum Kennedy, by the way, added to that list. These ones are, are recent ones that have been added. But um, we need to fathom why we get so many, um, and more than others, we, we accept that. And, you know, we now need to just get through this game tomorrow against Barnet, and then we can really, for two weeks, you know, um, reset, try and get a few of these boys back, and then ready for our next league assault, you know? And, and obviously, I know Tuesday night was a disappointment for, for everyone, but we've got to remember, I mean, last three away games, Oldham, clean sheet, point, yeah. you know, Ebbs Fleet, clean sheet, victory, Hartford, yeah. clean sheet, victory. So there's still yeah. a lot of positives. That yeah, have facts in there. I mean, like, you know, like, uh, clean sheet, win. Listen, we're, we're, we're doing loads of things right, actually. Uh, and to be fair, Tuesday night, looking back at the game, we was, we was good for a point, realistically. Uh, with the chance if we had second half, I think we'd have got scored a goal, we probably would have gone on to win it. It's one of those, but no, no discredit to Kidderminster, who I thought started the game brilliantly. But um, the game came around a bit too quick, and when you couple that with the amount of boys unavailable, it was just a stretch too far. Obviously, we've now four days, so the boys we have got available have had a bit more time to refresh. We've had our Thursday morning, so we've been able to plan for the game, um, and we've had some great games against Barnet in, in the last few years, and no doubt this will be a, another good game. And no doubt Meadowbank will be rocking, as, as, as you always say. Yeah, now tomorrow is another Wanderers first. Um, it's the first time that we've featured live on TV at home. Yeah. And it's obviously a 5 30 kickoff, so, um, you know, slightly later kickoff, but yeah, live at half five against Barnet. Um, so it's very exciting. Yeah, it really is. I mean, for us, always, you know, when people get. But listen, the majority of football, people in the football world really like the club and and support us and back us but um, you know whenever anyone looks at our results and thinks oh blimey you know like they've got to remember that um, teams have been in this division for donkey's years donkey's years and they can't do anything with it I mean I can guarantee you one thing we won't be right either way um, and um, we um, uh, we um, we're very proud we always talk about delivering first all the time and we're very proud to sort of have the first televised National League game at Dorking. Um, we're such a small team. Ten years ago, our attendance was 32, I think it was, against Seaford. Um, and tomorrow would be the best part of 3,000 um, live on TV. It's just a magnificent... It's really for everybody involved in the club, all the volunteers um, and hard-working staff that drive the club forward, continue to try and raise funds and, you know, uh, to help us... Uh, to help us with our plight of becoming a, an established National League side. So, yeah, listen, no matter what, it, it's just great um, to have the uh, the TV cameras down here. And actually, a word for TNT. Yeah, TNT is TNT, sports, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like their support for the National League is fantastic. And the job they do, here, you know, with these games is brilliant. And, um, you know, us clubs really appreciate it. So, listen... It's a brilliant first for the club. For me, I'm focused on on uh, on meeting Barnet and um, and seeing how we get on against them. And another first for the club tomorrow. Um, we're opening our new home bar area, which is right behind where you're standing, Mark, yeah. on the bank. Um, from two o'clock tomorrow, the bar at the bank will be open. Uh, a welcome addition to the ground, an opportunity for fans to come down nice and early. We're giving everybody a free drink who's here between 2 and 2.30 to commemorate the fact that it's opening and um, just, a, yeah, another real positive for the club. Yeah, massive, you know, big positive. Um, it's um, um, really appreciate Mile Valley Council um, yeah. enabling us to have some extra space. Listen, what I would say is Mile Valley Council are extremely supportive. And they're also very lucky to have this club and all the volunteers in the town as well. We need to be frank about that. Um, and it is a reciprocal relationship. You know, this, this, this club does, you know, huge things for the community, but, but not just that, also the high street and the local businesses. And it's in, the, it's in Mole Valley's interest for this uh, place to be as hospitable, um, as welcoming as it can be. So they support us with the extra bar. And I know it's open super early, so the idea is 
you know, drink enough, we can still see the game, but, you know, yeah, <laughs> get in early, enjoy yourself. And just a word about Barnet, really, just about, you know, Dean's lot, um, you know, just looking forward to, to playing them. I think Barnet had had, like, a, it almost been a poison chalice for several years, really, like, in terms of the, the management, and Dean Brennan's, uh, Dean has done a, done a, a really good job there really good job and um, it's easy to say and a lot of football fans or whatever just bypass bypass success I think well, Barnet they've got a big ground you know so that means they should be you know should be good but Dino's he's barely been out of the top been out of the mix since he's been there he's what he's done is brilliant and he's done it quietly no fuss not huge resources you know and uh, and I think there's a lot to be respected about that and um no, it's, uh, we're looking forward to to playing them, but I think you know we go into the game having had a small break, even though we are absolutely, and I mean absolutely, you know dismantled as a team. We are gonna we go into the game confident. Good stuff. And just just finally, Mark, I just want to mention a, a big thank you to Pat Furlong and yeah. the team from JJ Mack who. Yeah. really kindly helped us prepare the area uh, where the bar yeah. bank's going to be. Pat's a good man. He's a sponsor of the club as well. Yeah, and cheers, Pat. Obviously, club, make sure so. you don't buy a drink, for God's sake. But, yeah, no. No, I appreciate that, Pat. And uh, great firm, JJ, JJ Mack. And, like I said, Mar Valley Council helping us out. And all our volunteers have helped get Absolutely. it ready. Absolutely. So, yeah, it should be a great day. The weather's looking good tomorrow. It is. Um, tickets uh, can still be bought. It's going to be rammed. Don't leave it to the last minute. Probably miss out. Yeah, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. We can't stress strongly enough. You really need to buy your ticket for this one online in advance. You don't want to risk it and then find you you're disappointed on the day. So go to dorkmorders.com, click on tickets. It takes a few seconds and then you know you're coming in. That's it. Right, Cheers, Mark, Chris. Thanks for your time. And thanks, uh, mate. we'll catch up again next week.